The bond market has gotten hammered and investors are fleeing in droves, but the selling pressure could also create opportunities. Joining me now, BlackRock, BlackRock Chief Investment Officer of Global Fixed Income, Rick Reeder. Uh, Rick, thanks so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks, Jack. Thanks for having me. Uh, so let's start with the Fed. Uh, they don't have a great track record of engineering that soft landing, but you're on the record saying you don't think we're headed for a recession. Uh, how does this scenario play out? So listen, I mean, I think the Fed's in a tough spot. I think, I think clearly they waited too long to start moving. I mean, it's actually ironic. We're going to hear next week about the, uh, the reduction of the balance sheet after just a couple of months ago, we were still putting money into the system. So it's a, it is a hard uh, hard problem to solve. Listen, I, you know, I, there are a series of things, though, that, that are promoting what is a pretty good backdrop for the economy today. Consumers in really good shape. I mean, you saw this from some of the data this week. Consumers are sitting on two and a half trillion of, uh, of savings. You've got, obviously, income at very high levels. You've got a white hot jobs market and corporates are in really good shape. So I think that kind of, particularly think of look at what nominal GDP could look like when you've got this pricing power that companies have. Uh, yes, I think they can avoid recession. Listen, the question is whether the markets believe they can, uh, they can uh, avoid recession. We won't know the answer for a number of months. The question is, is the market going to get nervous about it or already has get, gotten nervous about it over the, uh, certainly over the last few weeks? Sure. So let, let's talk about two markets. We'll start with bonds and then pivot to stocks. So is it too simplistic to say, hey, look, we know there are rate hikes coming. Uh, that, to me, would suggest you really don't want to put money to work in bonds until at least the market sniffs out the end of that hiking cycle. Uh, but you know more about this than I do. What's your opinion? <laughs> I don't, so... Listen, I think the Fed's tightening financial conditions. They can't be any more clear. And, uh, and, and by the way, you could get a Fed that moves quicker. And we could hear in this next meeting that they could move quicker, i.e. 75 basis point moves in June and July, which, by the way, is not, is not uh, a bad way to do it. When you think about if to move quicker and then to be able to pivot if the economy slows, where you're seeing some parts of that today. So, so what do you do? Listen, I think I think you know, the number one key to fixed income is you got to be patient. And, you know, where do you put money to work? I still think that you got to be conservative. You got to keep your interest rate exposure down. You know, you're starting to get levels, though, that are, are, are getting really intriguing in places like things like investment grade credit in the U.S. and in Europe, where you're getting yields now that are well back of 4% in some places, uh, back of 5%. I still want to hear from the Fed and how fast they're going to go. But you know, start to put some money to work in some of the higher quality, particularly shorter, uh, shorter on the yield curve assets are, are starting to make some sense and have some attractive break evens from a uh, win versus versus lose perspective. And to your credit, you went into this downturn with more cash than usual. Uh, so it sounds like you've got some dry powder. Uh, let's pivot to stocks. Again, the market clearly is getting very worried. It's the longer duration stocks, the tech stocks that are getting hammered the hardest, understandable. Um, what's your view of that market? How much farther does that have to fall before uh, you know, investors feel comfortable? You know, so I was thinking we were going through it in our strategy meetings today, both on the stock market and the bond market. And it's pretty hard to assess how far you are along. But my sense is that you are somewhere around 90 percent of the way there, both in bonds and stocks. Listen, I, I don't think 10 year treasuries are going to get much back of three and a quarter type of yield. I mean, could they move a bit further back? They could. And then, you know, the stock market, boy, you're getting the valuations. You're you talking about some of the tech earnings. Which, you know, when you break it down, you look at the free cash flow generation of these companies today, i.e., you know, pretty darn strong and still growing. And you talk about forward P.E. on some of these equities that are starting to get really attractive. So, listen, I don't think we're that far away. You know, we're, we're, we're starting to pick away a little bit, whereas, you, as, you, uh, as you rightly mentioned, we're running uh, maybe I think it's the highest level of cash we've ever run in our portfolios. But we're starting to pick away at some of these where the multiples have gotten pretty interesting today, including tech, you know, including places that are structurally in good place, like like agriculture, parts of the energy market, parts of the materials market. But I, you know, I actually think tech is you're getting in places we're looking at software this week. Boy, you're getting companies are not going to reduce the amount they're going to spend on software. In fact, almost, you know, you know, universally, they're talking about increasing it. Boy, the multiples now are getting pretty interesting. So we're picking away at it, but we're still saying pretty conservative. 
Uh, one thing I want to pick up, you mentioned energy, a very different trade from tech, of course. You think that still has farther to run? <laughs> I think the backbone of energy, yes, we've had we've had quite a run, but I but I still think the backbone. You know, you look at some of the refiners. We were looking at the forward cash flow dynamics around refiners over the next few years because you're going to get obviously significant U.S. production. Those are interesting. You know, I still think I still think ENP has got a great backbone to it. It's hard to see real pressure on oil prices. Nat gas, well, you, you know, you take the lost supply going into Europe. And, and the lack of global supply of nat gas now that, yeah, I think those markets are still well supported. And, you know, you've got, and by the way, the value, if you assume and you look at the forward curves on oil or nat gas, and then you try and, and then you bake in, gosh, what is, you know, where are, what's a multiple off of, off of those numbers? You know, energy's still, uh, still in a reasonable place. And unlike the past 10 years, those companies are showing some serious capital discipline. Uh, Rick Reeder, thank you so much. That's right. Thanks for having me.